Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it might be for you. This is week three, and this is going to be our content lecture. We're going to talk a little bit about managers, the organization, and then what we do to put all of that together to go ahead and get an output or a good product service for our customer. So, what makes a good manager? Ask yourself that question. What makes a good manager? Maybe they have great communication skills. Maybe they motivate you. Maybe they just make you feel good. Okay? So think in terms of, as a good manager, what are you looking for? Now, let's do the reverse. What about a bad manager? When I say bad manager, what comes to mind? Maybe somebody that doesn't communicate well. Maybe somebody that doesn't show you the proper respect. Maybe somebody that doesn't really know what they're doing when it pertains to talking to you about your job. So there can be a lot of things that go ahead and come into play when we ask, well, what makes a good manager? What makes a bad manager? Now, the thing you need to realize is managers have a different type of effect on different types of individuals. Look at it this way. If you're in the workforce and maybe you are a younger worker, maybe you're a millennial fresh out of college, you're going to look at that manager a little differently because it's brand new. You haven't been involved in the workforce. If you're a, a, a mid-level worker, somebody that's been around for a little while but not a long, long time, you might think, wow, this manager, they're pretty good. They know what's going on. If you are a senior employee and your manager happens to be younger than you, you might think, oh, wow, this person doesn't know anything. I've been here 30 years. They've been here three years. Who knows more? So it depends on a lot of things. Depends on a lot of criteria, a lot of characteristics, but always circles back to one thing. What skills are you looking for in a manager that's going to help you fulfill your job requirements? So now let's turn the tables. Let me ask you a question. If you were a manager, what would you believe would be the best skill sets that you should have? And you'll probably come up with different ones. But when you start thinking in terms of just some of the basics, you have to know how to communicate. You have to know how to plan. You have to know how to organize. You have to know how to delegate. Most importantly, you have to know how to make decisions. That gets us into our next piece of content. The number one criteria, the number one activity for being a manager and most importantly being successful is making good decisions. Now, there's two factors that come into play when we talk about managers making decisions. What are they? What do you think they are? What do you believe would be the two most important factors for managers to make good decisions? How about number one, education? Having that good, solid foundation of content knowledge, just like you're going through now. You're getting the education of how to look at organizational development. All right, so that foundation can come from a number of different ways. Obviously, it can come from school, but it can also come from training classes. It can also come from mentoring. It can also come from on-the-job training. So there's a lot of ways that we can go ahead and get education. Don't just think in terms of it's strictly school. But what's the other way? What's the other key way that we can make good decisions? Experience. Okay, we can go through all of these different activities that we have to make decisions about with our experience. So when you start coupling education and experience, you're going to be able to make good decisions. Now, in the, in, in the book, it talks about three different types of managers. So they all have a different function. The top line manager might be your vice president level. The middle manager might be like a director level or senior manager type person. And then we've got the frontline manager who is closest to the worker bees. Okay, so each of those managers 
has to have a special skill set. For example, the frontline manager, they better be able to communicate and relate to that frontline worker. Chances are, not all the time, but chances are that frontline manager has done that job. They understand it. They know what's going on with it. They can relate to the workers when the workers say, hey, this is working well. Hey, this isn't working well. What decision should we make based on the information I'm sharing with you? Now, the other thing about the management is different management levels have different responsibility levels. Okay? The frontline workers report to the frontline manager. The frontline manager reports to the middle manager. The middle manager reports to the top manager. Typically, the top manager reports to CEO, owner, senior vice presidents, guys and gals like that. Now, the other thing about the managers are they have different authority levels. Okay? So, depending on your function, depending on your role, you're going to have different authority levels. You're going to have a different role and responsibility. You're going to have different skill sets. Ultimately, though, all of those have to result in what? Good decision making. Managers have to make good decisions because the employees or the team is looking to you for guidance. And if we can create that good atmosphere, and I'll get a little off track here. We call that culture. Okay, if companies have a good culture, then the decision-making process filters down from the top. Everybody's thinking along the same lines. Because what comes after that? We have to take a look at our organizational structure. And, and it's just a fancy way for saying, how do all of the jobs relate to each other? So again, if, if we use a factory as an example... We've got our factory workers, okay? And there's going to be a, a, a lot of those, right? There's going to be a lot of those folks because some of them are going to work on the production line. Some of them are going to work on raw materials. Some of them are going to work in shipping. Some of them are going to work in inventory. So all of those folks, they report up to one manager. That manager then reports up to the other folks that we talked about earlier. So... Everybody has to be in sync. And how do we know that everybody's headed in the right direction? Very simply, it's based off of the mission statement for the company. And remember what our definition of mission statement is. A mission statement, quite simply, is what does the company do? The vision statement is what does the company want to be? But the mission statement tells everybody, employees, consumers, vendors, lenders, the mission statement tells what the company does. So if you look at that mission statement, you should be able to make a link between what your job is and what the mission statement for the company is. Then when we look at the mission statement, we start at the top and we work our way down to what? the strategies involved at each level and at each position. So the strategy for an admin person to contribute to the mission is going to be a heck of a lot different than the strategy for a production worker to contribute to the mission. The main thing is you need to know how your function contributes directly to the mission of the company. What strategy, and remember, strategy is that long-term thing. Tactics are the short-term things. Okay, so we need to know what strategy contributes to the mission because ultimately, what are we looking for? We're looking for output. And that output has to be successful and it has to meet the needs of the consumers. So if you, if you just kind of rehash everything we've talked about. We set it all up with what? Our managers, their experience and education level, their decision making, who reports to the managers. It's all based on the mission. Each little pod or each little group has different strategies that all interact with one another. But ultimately it has to come down to 
getting out a quality product or service to meet the needs of the consumer. If we can't do that, then all of the things we just talked about really aren't going to be important because, heck, you know what? We won't be in business. If we don't have a good product or service to give to our customer, we're not going to be in business. And the chances are if we've failed, we failed because some of the content things we've just spoken about are not being done properly or we're doing them entirely wrong or, heck, we may not even be doing them. All right, so that's going to do it for week three. Enjoy your class this week. If you need anything, I'm just an email or phone call away. See you next week.